Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a long awaited video. Many people have asked me over and over again, when are you going to review the new Jubilation 40? Or when are you just going to review Jubilation 25 for man for that matter? So um, this is one that uh, has been sort of a love of mine for the last decade. I've absolutely loved Jubilation 25 for man. I think it's one of the best fragrances of all time, really. Um, for me anyways. And if you saw my uh, family portrait of Amouage, ranked family portrait. You saw just how much I thought about Jubilation 25 with its ranking. Um, and many of my favorite fragrances have yet to be given an individual review on the channel because I just feel like um, if I rush them, they won't be proper and I won't take enough time and I won't do them justice and they deserve justice done. So, uh, first of all, before we go any further, I have to say thank you very much to my good friend Allie, who is a huge Amouage fan, and she sent me a lot of these very generous decants. This is probably eight mils of Jubilation 40 for me to get to know and wear, and I've worn this to bed once. I'm, excuse me, I'm wearing this as my scent of the day today, if you will. I've got Jubilation 40 on my right hand, and I've got this particular bottle. I wanted to use the magnetic cap of um, Jubilation. I actually just showed you the non-magnetic cap, but I think these two smell very close to each other. The biggest differences for me is this one kind of just lasts a little bit longer, has maybe a little bit more depth, but to me, I wouldn't go buy a vintage bottle of, of this for big money on eBay or anything like that. Um, now, that being said, my magnetic cap is probably, I've probably had this bottle for eight to ten years, is my guess. Um, it is a Made in Oman bottle, and um, you know, the box, which I showed sort of on the thumbnail, if you will, but uh, that's the box that it came in. Um, and so I think I've had this about eight to 10 years, if I had to guess. And um, you can see the dent I've put in it. So I have worn the, this is my dent, by the way. Speaking of dents, look at the dent on the atomizer there. I dropped this bad boy and it hit something hard. And I was like, oh no, and it survived. So these bottles are legit. Um, but this is the magnetic cap. So I've got the magnetic cap version here, but you notice it's not the one that says Jubilation 25 down here on in the front, which is one of the changes they made when the Fishman took over, when Raynaud Salman took over. They moved the name from the, some of them say it on the side here. Mine doesn't say it on the side uh, or the front. Uh, the only place it says it is on the collar. So even though this is a magnetic cap, it is an older version of the magnetic cap. So Many people think I'm going to get on here and say that Jubilation 25 just smells like the vintage Jubilation, okay? Or sorry, Jubilation 40, excuse me, too many numbers. Jubilation 40, uh, which is supposed to be in honor of the 40th anniversary of Amouage, just like Jubilation 25 for man was supposed to be in honor of the 25th anniversary, from my understanding. Um, but many people think I'm going to get on here and say Jubilation 40, the exceptional X-ray, just basically smells like the older vintage version of Jubilation 25. And unfortunately, for those people who are expecting that, that is not the case, at least not to me. Um, and it's worse to, in, to my nose. And we're going to talk about some of the pros and the cons, but if I paid $500, which is what 100 mils of this goes for at retail, if I paid $500 for this, I would be deeply, deeply disappointed, okay? Deeply disappointed. Um, and so let's talk about some of the differences, but first I want to read the amazing blurb from the Amouage website. So, the exceptional x-ray product description, sumptuous, extravagant, and profound. Jubilation 25 celebrates the nobility of masculinity that embraces the beauty of both East and West. I agree with that statement. Following 10 weeks of patient aging at 40% concentration, hence the Jubilation 40 moniker, the fragrance became, becomes even more complex and multifaceted, resulting in Jubilation 40 Man X-Ray capturing the essence of sophistication. That I disagree with. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about the differences to my nose, okay? So when you have them, first of all, like one here and one here, you can pick out differences that if you wear this on one day, let's say, and this the next day, they may seem much closer to your nose. But when you literally do a comparison video skin on skin, you know, they both sprayed at the exact same time, uh, you'll be able to pick out these differences in much greater detail. And sometimes I've done these type of videos and I'll say, you know what, there's just not very much difference. But here there is a big difference, at least to my nose. And so 
the biggest thing for me is I think Jubilation 25, the, the OG from, from 2008, which is what Parfumo has it at, 2008. Many people say uh, the women's version was released in 2007. Some people have 2007 as the year of this as well. Parfumo has 2008, so I've just been going with 2008. Um, that's what I put it at in my This Year in Perfume. But really, this is so regal, well blended. I've said it before, but wearing this really does make you feel like a shake in the Middle Eastern countries. It makes you feel like a sultan. I mean, I literally feel like this is what someone who rules Oman would smell like. They nailed Jubilation 25 to me. Uh, and you get many of the notes. And so the Blackberry, which is so raved about by many fragrance lovers, and I love the Blackberry note in Jubilation 25. I think it's actually the Blackberry note. I don't think I've smelled a better Blackberry note, but it's part of the blend. You know, it is not just Blackberry in your face. When you smell Jubilation 25, you're going to get Blackberry along with the frankincense, along with the orange. Um, the orange here is slightly juicy, slightly bitter. The labdanum, um, you get the resins. It's definitely a resinous, woody. You get the cedar, you know, you get the beautiful rose. You get the honeyed aspect to it. The celery seed actually does pop through. Um, you know, you get the myrrh. The oud is very tamed down in Jubilation 25. Even the vintage batch, it's not like you're getting a big, huge blast of oud or anything like that. It's all mixed in. It's all blended beautifully. This is perfumed by Bertrand du Chafour, who I've called like a magician, the incense magi magician, if you will. The guy just, um, I mean, he is a weaver of tales and um, of fragrances. And he was the perfect man for the job for Jubilation 25. I think this is probably one of his best works. Um, I have some others from him that are still on the two review list, like Sartorial and um, Zonka and... You know, stuff from Lachizan Parfumera that he's done that I haven't reviewed on the channel yet. There's a lot of Birdie D videos coming very soon. But um, for me, this is one of his all-time best, hands down. I mean, he absolutely nailed this. Uh, Avignon is also probably one of my favorite incenses that I've ever smelled. Um, and, and so the whole idea with Jubilation 25 when it came out is it was supposed to use ingredients from the Omani landscape. You know, so the ambergris was supposed to be ambergris washed up on the Omani shores, right? You know, the the um, frankincense is what basically Oman is really known for. The frankincense in here is some of the highest quality frankincense from Oman. Um, you know, the myrrh is from Oman. The, um, the rock rose, the labdanum that's used is supposed to be from Oman, that kind of thing, right? And so they really were highlighting um, sort of the history of the house, if you will. And Bertrand du Chafour nailed it to me. But when you smell the blackberry, which is kind of on the intro blast, you get that blackberry burst, right? But it's blended in with the rest of the composition beautifully on Jubilation 25. When you spray Jubilation 40, the second it hits your skin, if you're familiar with Jubilation 25, you're going to notice that the blackberry in here smells more like a blackberry puree or almost like a blackberry pie, okay? So... And the reason I say, I'll, I'll tell you the reason that I say pie here later on as we go on with the review, but it's interesting because you're hit with a smell that is different to, than Jubilation 25 to me. Uh, it, it smells um, like a strange offshoot. You know, it, it doesn't necessarily smell right. It smells like something is off to my nose. Um, and the blackberry puree slash blackberry pie is front and center. You don't get that frankincense early on like you do with Jubilation 25. Jubilation 40 um, feels less complex to my nose, not more, especially in the opening. As it dries down, I will begrudgingly admit that it gets better. But, you know, we're talking waiting hours and hours for the dry down to come through. You should not have to wait hours and hours to enjoy a fragrance that's $500, in my opinion. Um, I think if you're new to the fragrance game and you've never smelled Jubilation 25 before and you just went straight to Jubilation 40, you would appreciate it more than someone like me who has vast amounts of experience with Jubilation 25. If you have experience with Jubilation 25, my guess is, I don't know this of course, but my guess is there will be much more disappointed people than people raving over Jubilation 40. The people raving over Jubilation 40 will be the newcomers, in my opinion. Um, and they won't see the differences because they don't have experience with Jubilation 25, okay? Uh, and it's interesting because there's that dichotomy of you're selling a fragrance that was worked on by the previous creative director, but you're doubling the price almost. Should it be smelling different? You know, we talked about that dichotomy of should it smell just like a higher uh, oil concentration version of the original? 
uh, like Epic 56 smells very close to Epic Woman to me, but I would just there I would just wear Epic Woman. There would be no reason for me to buy Epic 56. Um, but if you go watch my Reflection 45 review, you'll see that I said that Reflection Man and Reflection 45 definitely share some differences. That it feels almost like a flanker, and I guess that maybe is what you want. But with Reflection 45. I thought that was a fragrance where there was interesting enough differences where I would buy a bottle of that. I would like, if you said, Ramsey, pick one of the exceptional X-rays right now, it would be Re Reflection 45, hands down. With this, um, there are differences, but it feels worse, if that makes sense. It doesn't feel like, the, I'm like, hmm, these are interesting. I'd like to know. I'm almost like, why? Why, why did they do it this way? What is the reason? You know, and um, also, along with that sort of, um, strange, sweetened blackberry that is just front and center in your face, right? Um, there is also this boozy note that's added to Jubilation 40, uh, and that note is called Bay Rum. And I've talked a little bit about Bay Rum. If you've heard me talk a little bit about fragrances like, um, oh, let's see here. Sorry, I should have been better prepared, but, um, Vendetta, which is a, um, uh, Valentino fragrance for men that's discontinued. Uh, I believe Justin very kindly sent me this bottle. This was a um, this was a gift from my good friend Justin. Justin, and um, but this is kind of a take on and inspired by Halston Z14 fragrance, but with a very interesting bay rum note here, which Halston Z14 of course does not have. Um, some people that I've heard describe Jubilation 25 from the past say it almost has a little bit of a booziness that's not listed. Okay. I um, don't think I would describe it that way, but it's something I need to mention because it's something that has been mentioned by many folks that I um, really respect in the fragrance reviewing game. And um, so they say that even the OG has an unlisted booziness. I don't know if I would go that far, but I think maybe that rumor of that booziness, they thought, you know what, let's amp that booziness up. And so what they've done is they've used this note of um, Bay Rum, okay? And so, um, Bay Rum kind of adds a warming, sweetened, slightly liqueur feeling to the, to the, to the, um, to the perfume. So when you, when you spray it, especially in the first hour to two hours, okay, the first couple hours are probably one of the worst to me of this fragrance. Um, you know, if you've ever watched some of the big reviewers review Jubilation 25, excuse me, many of them rave about all different top parts of the fragrance, the top, the mid, the base. To me, um, Jubilation 40, the, the opening is a huge letdown for me, huge letdown. I really do not like that bay rum, booze, amped up booziness, amped up blackberry. You know, with the, with the blackberry in Jubilation 25, it's part of the, it's part of the blend. It's part of the whole composition. You're smelling something amazing and blackberry is just part of it. They're not beating you over the head with blackberry. You know what I mean? I feel like um, Jubilation 40 is kind of made for the newer generation where they're, it's like you can't miss it. You know what I mean? There's nothing subtle about it. They're like, it's a Blackberry note, and damn it, you're going to know it's a Blackberry note. We're going to beat you over the head with it. Uh, and that's kind of what they do along with that booziness. And um, some folks have said that Jubilation 40 smells rotten in the opening, that there's this dirty part of the, that it just doesn't, smells off. I don't know if I would say that it's rotten smelling, um, but I think there is something that smells off, especially if you know Jubilation 25, the OG. There is something in Jubilation 40 in the top that I really do not like. That's why I say, for those of you who thought I was going to come on here and say, oh, this is basically just a $500 version of the vintage. No, it's actually not. I would take this over Jubilation 40 any day of the week and twice on Sunday. Uh, I, I really don't like what they did with the top notes. Uh, really not a fan. And there may be, you know, my guess is, I don't know, but my guess is that there is an added note of black currant that is not listed in Jubilation 25 and that is listed in Jubilation 40. And so it's it's possible that that black currant um, could be giving it a little bit of a pissy vibe depending on which part of the plants they use. Sometimes if you use the leaves, of the black currant plant, it can add a little bit of a strange, pissy, rotten quality, okay? I just think it smells off. I don't think it smells rotten or anything. I just think it smells off. Um, the other thing that it could be, and again, I don't know if this is true, but the other thing that it could be is there's a note of scotch broom, okay? 
So broom is a note that I've discussed in one of my slumber house videos. I forget which one, but if you go watch my slumber house playlist, you'll, you'll eventually stumble across it on one of those videos. Um, and basically broom is a weed. Okay. So it's kind of like a weed that grows these golden yellow, um, hay looking flowers. Okay. Um, dry yellow hay looking flowers. And it's basically a weed that, um, imagine a weed with like a bitter, un with like a bitter undertone smell. And that bitter undertone sometimes can have facets of tobacco and sometimes it can have facets of honey. Now, again, this is off of research. I can't say I'm sitting here smelling a scotch broom, okay? Uh, it's interesting. If you actually pull up scotch broom and click on it in um, uh, Parfumo, there are almost no fragrances that list it other than just a handful, okay? So it's not a commonly used note. So the other thing that may be making people who are familiar with Jubilation 25 and know that that note is not there... Um, they may be smelling that scotch broom note. And so it may be a mixture of the strange black currant mixed with the scotch broom. And so if you just try to picture what I'm, the, the if you try to imagine in your mind the picture I'm trying to paint for you, right? Blackberry, that is much more sweetened, almost to the point of like a crusty pie, okay? With that strange bitter undertone of scotch broom added to a composition where the frankincense doesn't kind of come out and shine like it does on on the on the vintage on the on Jubilation twenty five, um, and it, I could completely see how people would be disappointed. Anyone who has any experience with Jubilation twenty five, I think, will be disappointed in Jubilation forty. Um, and also, I would say that you know that regal aspect. It's it's interesting because when I think about Jubilation twenty five, the words I would the words that come to my mind are things like opulent, regal. Um, their slogan, Amouage's slogan is literally the gift of kings. I don't know if it says it on here. Um, maybe the newer bottles do or something, but, um, you'll see their slogan on the website and, and, and in different places where it'll say the gift of kings. Um, and the reason is that Sultan Qaboos basically, um, founded Amouage and he was the king of Amouage at the time. Uh, and he wanted his country to have something beautiful. You know, he considered perfume beautiful. He was a big perfume lover. And so he created Amouage as a way to sort of have his country be proud of something that Oman produced other than just oil. You know, it's very hard to be uh, excited about oil production, right? Uh, and so as a country, they can rally around something beautiful that they have. And so when I think of the gift of kings, for me, you know, Jubilation 25 is the fragrance that sort of embodies that. This speaks to that slogan to me. Uh, this this is the type of things that I... These are the type of fragrances I want Amouage to create. I've been extremely hard on Amouage since the new creative director took over. And there's a reason for that, right? Uh, you know, Jubilation 25 to me is kind of a masterpiece. I don't care about the fact... There are some people that say, well, the formula of uh, Jubilation 25 is filled with a cheap ingredient. That is this, that, or whatever. I don't care, honestly. I once asked a perfumer this question. I said... Um, what percentage of material, you know, do you have to use a certain percentage of expensive materials or something like that for a fragrance to be good, to be considered, you know, a, a, um, to be considered a, a, a hit, a masterpiece or whatever it is. And she told me, no, that uh, you can create a fragrance with any type of materials. You don't have to use expensive materials. Um, and so I think there are a lot of expensive materials in Jubilation 25, but people give Jubilation 25 sometimes a hard time because they say it's made up of a particular note. And I'm sure someone who's heavy, who's heavy into the creating side of fragrances, which I don't, I don't create my own fragrances or anything like that, but someone who's heavy into the creative side of fragrances could easily look at this and probably, you know, using GCMS, tell me in the comments what that particular note is, but I don't care. I don't care about any of that. To me, it is regal, it's opulent, uh, and I don't think about those same words when I smell Jubilation 40. I don't think about those words at all. Um, like I said, it seems like a weird offshoot, like a third distant removed step cousin that um, didn't get the good genes. You know what I mean? It has that sort of feel to it. And along with that, you know, weird opening, one of the things that I was really hoping for is that the fragrance would transition. Okay, fine. You're doing the weird, sweeter opening thing um, to sort of capture maybe the younger audience or whatever you're doing, right? Uh, there's a reason for it. Trust me, none of this stuff is um, accidental, right? 
This is specifically targeted by the people creating the fragrance, and I'm sure Bertrand Duchefort was told to create, which I think he came back and made Jubilation 40. Yes, he did. He did. Um, so he was specifically told to create the fragrance this way. I have no doubt in my mind, okay? Um, and, and so what I was hoping for is that they would give you a little bit of that strangeness, and then maybe it would dry down and change into something different. And it really doesn't. I mean, later into the dry down it does, but you have to wait two, three, four hours that strangeness of the opening um, lasts much longer than I was hoping for. The transition for me really feels like it's stuck in a phase that longer than it should be, right? The, the transitions in Jubilation 25 to me are masterpiece. You know, the top, the heart, the base, everything, you know, even the, even the um, transition into the woody cedar note, you know, the resinous, um, earthy myrrh and all that stuff that you get. It's, it's brilliantly executed, Jubilation 25. Jubilation 40 feels like the fragrance is stuck in oil. You know, I mentioned oil earlier with um, Oman being known for oil, but it's literally like it's in a heavy oil concentrate, like a barrel of oil and it can't get out. Uh, it feels stuck is really the way I would describe it. Um, it feels like it's drowning in a barrel of oil. And while Jubilation 25, instead of drowning in a barrel of oil, it smells like golf oil wealth. To me, Jubilation 25 smells like Gulf Oil Wealth. Jubilation 40 feels like the ugly duckling that you see in those Dawn commercials where there's like an oil spill, like the Exot Valdez, right, in the 80s. Uh, and they and they pull the ducklings out and they're covered in oil and they're shaking and they can't move, you know, because uh, the oil is all over them and they have to wash, it off, wash off all their feathers with, um, you know, with Dawn. That's what Jubilation 40 feels like to me. It feels like the ugly duckling of Jubilation 25. Um, and finally, the nail in the coffin for Jubilation 40 for me is the sweetness. Now, many of you who know me will say, uh, you're just like a hound dog looking for sweetness. You're just going, I, I detect a sweeter molecule, I'm out. But you know what? There is a true, um, there's a, I have a true beef about the sweetness in Jubilation 40. It feels amped up. Okay, and not just a little bit, but a lot, you know, they amped up Jubilation 40's sweetness to a level that really bothers me. Um, and when you wear them side by side, Jubilation 25 smells so much drier. And you know what ends up coming through on Jubilation 25 as the as the hours tick by three, four, five hours, once the dry down really starts to happen, you start to get, um, You'll notice the base notes much more in Jubilation 25. You'll notice things like the oak moss, okay? When I wear Jubilation 25 by itself, normally I'm not smelling the, the oak moss. I'm smelling the honey, you know. I'm smelling um, um, the divana, the cinnamon aspect of it. Um, the immortelle sometimes comes through. But rarely am I getting like this mossy base. And But whenever I compare it because of just how sweet Jubilation 40 is, Jubilation 25 feels so much drier and so much more of the mossy base pushes through, okay? Uh, and it's it's interesting, you know, it's a part of the fragrance that I don't think I would really like focus on. Your eye won't really, your nose, you know, I think you smell, obviously you smell with your brain anyways, but um, your, your eye won't go to that tree moss, oak moss note, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but it feels so much heavier in Jubilation 25, feels drier, that old school oak moss note comes through more. And I understand part of it is because at 40% oil concentration, that Jubilation 40 is going to be much slower through its transitions. But I feel like with some of the exceptional x-rays, they did a good job on the transitions moving from one part of the fragrance to the other. Jubilation 40, I don't feel like they did a good job on it. Um, it, like I said, it feels like it's stuck in mud or stuck in oil and you want that next transition to come. You're waiting for it and it's just unbelievably slow. And it's not like, God, the opening is so awesome. I'm so glad it's sticking around. No, it's like, I'm watching, looking at my watch going, okay, come on, let's go speed this up. And it doesn't. Uh, and the sweetness that you're hoping goes away takes forever to go away. Now, to be fair, as the hours tick by, the fragrances do go like this, because there is a part of Jubilation 40, honestly, where it smells like a cheap clone of Jubilation 25. To me, it smells like a cheap clone. I'm sorry. If you put this under my nose and you blindfolded me and you said, what is this, Ramsey? Probably the first hour of the fragrance, I would have said, I have no clue what this is. 
Um, never would I have guessed in the first hour this is a jubilation, okay? Many people are like, oh, it smells just like a higher-end version of jubilation. Bullshit. Uh, I don't think it smells like a higher-end jubilation version of anything, except in the dry-down. In the dry-down, if you put this under my nose, I would go, okay, maybe this is like Fragrance Dubois trying to make like a jubilation esque clone, which I know they did with New York Intense. Not a clone, but an inspired by fragrance, right? Uh, but honestly, I would take New York, I would take Fragrance Dubois' New York over this. Honestly, that's that's how disappointed I am with Jubilation 40. I don't know how much clearer I can make it. Many of you thought I would, you know, get on here and say, yeah, it's a good fragrance, but it's not the, it's actually one of the biggest disappointments of the exceptional X-ray line for me. Now, again, going back, if you have no experience with Jubilation 25, then this review, this comparison video may kind of be moot to you. You know, you may buy Jubilation 40 and you just don't have the same frame of reference as someone who has worn Jubilation 25 for years. Um, and I really feel like Jubilation 40 is the perfect example of the space that the Amouage brand is in right now. You know, they're taking older fragrances, they're they're messing with them, they're changing them, and guess what? They're not changing them for the better. They're changing them for the worse to my nose. The fragrance house is being changed for the worse. This is like an encapsulation of the pain and woes that are going on at Amouage. And I'm sure the people at Amouage are going, <laughs> we're making more money than ever, asshole. But the reality of the situation is the artistry of your creations is shite. It is absolutely pathetic, I think, what you've done for the house, and it quite frankly, pisses me off. Um, I am honestly pissed off at what they've done to the House of Amouage. Uh, you, previously, one of my favorite houses of all time. I mean, there were one, Christopher Chong and his creations were one of the reasons why I'm sitting here talking to you today. I mean, they moved me in a way very few fragrances did at the time. Um, and many, many years went on in those early years of my, you know, fragrance journey, if you will, where I thought Amouage was the, the house, you know, I thought Amouage was the cream of the crop, and now I just look at them with disgust. You know, I'm just like, ugh. Uh, you see, I didn't go out and buy this. Someone sent this to me. I would not give them one penny of my money right now. Uh, like yesterday, I reviewed Opus 6, right? So we have back-to-back -back Amouage reviews on the channel. Um, and it's not on the website anymore. You used to be able to search for it, and you could find some of the older bottles. They must have just sold off all the old stock. And I think they are going down a very slippery slope where... You know, they're trying to almost cover up Christopher Chong's legacy. Like, um, when a great emperor passes away or, or gets kicked out of power or something, they try to pretend his reign never happened. You know, the new guy's almost, like, jealous to a point where they're trying to hide it. And um, I don't like what they're doing, honestly. Not at all. Not, not one bit. Uh, probably some of the best fragrances that have come out under the Fishman are Silver Oud, which I wish I would have got the 50 mil instead of the 100 mil. Um, and the, the older style bottle, and um, Royal Tobacco. Royal Tobacco, if you said, Ramsey, you can have one fragrance under the Fishman that you don't own, Royal Tobacco would be it. I really enjoyed that fragrance. I have a review off of a, off of a decant sample but um, on the channel. But other than that, I mean, it has been miss after miss after miss, disappointment after disappointment after disappointment. Um, and I, um, I, you know, at this point, I just... It's almost like someone told me yesterday, they said, Creed is just another fragrance house now, Ramsey. And that's exactly how I feel about Amouage. Amouage and Creed and these types of, they're just another fragrance house. They're nothing special anymore. Everything that made them special has been pulled out of them by their corporate o overlords. Uh, and it's a sad state of affairs. I mean, Pierre Bourdon once had it, had it right. He sat in an interview with uh, Frederick Mall. It was um, Jean-Claude Elena, Pierre Bourdon. I mean, these big names, right? Uh, Maurice Roussel was there, uh, as was Anne Filippo, I think, and a couple others. And um, Pierre Bourdon said, you want to take back fragrances for the people like us who love perfume? Kick all of the moneyed interests out, right? Because they're not looking at it from a artistic point of view. They don't care about the art. They're sitting there, they're counting money so long, their hands hurt. They need a hand massage from counting money for so long, you know. That's, that's where their head's at. They care about the dollars and cents, and um, uh, that's what Amouage has turned into. I hate, I think that if Sultan bin uh, Kaboos was still alive at this point in time, and he saw what was going on with Amouage, I think he would be offended. I think he would personally be offended by what they've done to his creation. 
Um, that's how I feel about it. And I, I can't say it any clearer. I can't articulate it any better than that. That is truly how I feel in my heart of hearts, that he would be uh, saddened, disappointed, and offended. Uh, he would probably tear it down. Honestly, he'd probably tear it down. So that's my take on it. I mean, um, I think I said everything I wanted to say. If you have experience with Jubilation 40 yet, I mean, it just came out. Um, when did it come out? End of the year, you know, 2023, whatever it was, November, um, whatever it is, November, December. Um, I know it just came out, but if you have experience with it, let me know. Um, I think even at 10 or 20 or 30 percent of the $500 price tag, I don't think I would buy this. I mean, I'm going to wear it kind of as its own scent, and maybe one of these days, I mean, that's a lot of juice for me still to wear. So I'm going to wear it as my as a scent of the day from now, from time to time. Maybe I'll review it individually. Maybe I'll review Jubilation 25 individually. But honestly, I don't think there's a need. I think this comparison video kind of encapsulates everything I feel like I need to say. That's kind of my take. So again, thank you to everybody who makes these kind of videos possible. Obviously, as just one independent man. Someone, um, it's funny, I actually got an email. I won't disclose the brand name, but um, someone from a brand sent me an email and said, we want to collaborate with you. What's your price? And, and I just wanted to send back, oh, you want to collaborate with me? Well, I got like hundred and something thousand dollars in lawyer fees on this divorce. Can you pay those, please? Um, but no, it's just ridiculous what's going on in the, in the fragrance uh, YouTube game right now. Everyone seems to be bought and sold. There's so much bullshit flying around. Um, and it's just, you know, I, I appreciate people like Allie for making this happen. I obviously can't, um, you know, I can't uh, do everything by myself. I can't, can't buy everything. It's impossible to buy everything. With every, especially with how fast the releases are coming out nowadays, keeping up is impossible. That's why some of these newer fragrance uh, fragrances don't get as much talk on my channel. Plus, my heart is with vintage, so it's just kind of one of those things. But as always, I appreciate everyone who has supported me. Uh, I love you guys. Thanks for watching. Cheers, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.